Welcome back to another Innovation Review. Today, we're going to be taking a look back and talk about some of our favorite things on the Himaway Cruiser. All right, guys, today we are here for our long-term review of the Himaway Cruiser. And right now we're gonna talk about the things that I don't love about this bike. And the first one is gonna be this twist throttle. Now the twist throttle here, very on par with a lot of the twist throttles we've seen and I'm not necessarily commenting on the quality. It's just the fact that who this bike is mostly marketed for, especially when we look at the step-through version. Some of those people, if they're older, they may be having some issues with you know, their back or their knees and maybe they have arthritis or something like that. So having this twist throttle here kind of goes against some of those things they designed the bike for. So in my opinion, having a thumb throttle here would really be a much better match for this bike. Also with this twist throttle, the way it's set up with this half grip on the right hand side, I felt like when I was gripping the twist throttle, I was pretty much just gripping that. I feel like it sort of disrupts the grip as a whole. Maybe they can look at adding a thumb throttle to future models. The next thing that could use improving in my opinion is the battery. So when we look at this battery compared to the old model of the Cruiser, it's definitely an upgrade. I like the way that it's stylish. I like the way that it goes in. Again, kind of from a usability standpoint, no real knocks there. It's a large capacity battery and it fits very securely into the frame. My only complaint here is that the battery itself sticks out about an inch on both sides of the frame here. Now from an engineering standpoint, we really don't have too much more to work with as far as getting maybe a longer, thinner battery or adding some beef to the frame on the bottom wouldn't necessarily want to widen the bottom of the frame here. However, it would just kind of make it seem more aesthetically pleasing and not like the battery was kind of an afterthought and they threw it on a decent frame. The next thing I'm not a huge fan of is the kickstand that they chose to go with for this model. Though we do have some adjustments here, we can slide it up and down. I found that I really wanted the bike to sit a little bit more upright and I didn't quite have the flexibility with the adjustable kickstand that I got. I feel like this is a very easily upgradable part either from the end user or Himaway themselves. We could see one that gives us maybe a little bit more flexibility and allows us to put this bike in a little bit more of an upright position. The other thing that I wasn't a huge fan of is that this bike at that price point comes with mechanical disc brakes. Now we've seen a few different bikes around this price range that come with hydraulic disc brakes. So in my opinion, something that will elevate the Cruiser as a whole would just be to add some hydraulic disc brakes on here, maybe look at possibly enlarging the discs that we have. Now from a functionality standpoint, everything worked the way it was supposed to. I unlocked the bike and I was able to go 32, 33 miles per hour and I had no issue stopping with the current brake system that they have here. So not really a complaint, just something that they could be upgrading in future versions of the bike. As you can tell, I had to get a little bit nitpicky with the things that I think could be improved upon because my overall impression of the bike was it's a very good bike for the price. I had my own reservations going into this review. I've seen things online, I've seen pictures, I've seen other reviews, and I really wasn't expecting too much, but with this new model, I feel like they're really taking it in the right direction. So the first thing I love about this bike is just the general feel of the ride. I feel like the cockpit is set up very nicely. I think all of the measurements that we have here going from standover height to reach are all really reasonable for a lot of people to be able to get on it. The only thing that may hinder some people is the standover height on the non-step through version. And so if that's something you can't quite reach, they do have that step through version for you to try out as well. And from what I'm able to tell, as I haven't got my hands on the step through version, there's not too much that's different other than the fact that the down tube is gonna be a little bit lower and allow people who can't hit that standover height to easily access the bike. As far as riding position on this, it is fairly upright. There's a little bit of a forward lean to it. And if you're somebody who is a little bit more averse to leaning forward, say if you're a little bit older, or you have back problems or knee problems in that position, just isn't quite what you're looking for. There's definitely ways that we could upgrade this stem or the headset to give us a little bit more flexibility, maybe bring the bars up and back just a smidge, and then this thing would be absolutely a joy to ride. We've also got the shocks on here and those big fat tires. Now I've got my PSI a little bit low on these, and I found that when I was riding around, it was just buttery smooth, everything. I mean, I'm going 30 miles an hour over small bumps, this, that, and the other, and I feel like I'm just riding on pavement. The next thing that I really like about this bike is the list of features that it comes with. So we have this integrated tail light, we've got an integrated headlight, we have got this rear rack, and we've also got these nice big lightweight plastic fenders. In my opinion, there was a lot of attention to detail to kind of sprinkle some of those things throughout. We've also got this nice handle right here on the back of the seat. 
which I'm a big fan of for moving the bike around if I'm maneuvering around a garage or something like that. We've also got a bell hidden up there in the brake levers, nice little touch. And the display that the Himaway comes with is also very nice. I'm a big fan of grayscale as opposed to full color. I can appreciate both. However, out here in Texas, we've got a lot of sunlight. So having something that's easily readable is something that's important to me. And I feel like that screen pretty much delivers on that. All of the fonts are very large, very easy to read. Even if I was leaning way back on the bike, I can still tell how fast I'm going or what level of pedal assist I'm in. The other thing that I really like about the Himalay Cruiser are these big fat tires. We've seen a lot of bikes, actually most of the bikes that I have personally reviewed have been these larger 26 by four inch or 20 by four inch, these big fat tires. And these ones have some of those extra safety features that we'd like to see and some things that I normally comment on if they aren't there. So we've got this sidewall reflective stripe here and that's excellent for nighttime safety. We have all the lights. So from a nighttime safety perspective, this bike is awesome. However, with this added bonus here, if you are being approached from a car from the side, well, that light is gonna come and it's gonna bounce off that. Even though it may be more difficult for a car to see you if you didn't have this, you know, headlights are pointing this way, taillights going that way. So if you're getting approached directly from the side, this is just a little extra reflection to keep you safe at night. All right, guys, that is going to do it for our long-term review of the Himaway Cruiser. If you want to know more about Himaway, I'll put a link to their website down below. And if you've got any other questions about this ride, I didn't really touch on anything you guys are interested in, please let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.